The title of my message today is This Kind of Love. And aren't love stories the best? I was having coffee with somebody this week and something randomly reminded me of a part of my own romantic love story, which is that when I was 17, I began falling in love when I was 17 and uh, I went on a mission trip for the Christmas holidays between year 11 and year 12. And uh, I was with an organization and so this burgeoning relationship that I had with my now husband, Luke, uh, meant that because I was a teenager back in the days of horse and cart and feather pens, that the only way we could communicate with one another was through letter writing. Isn't that romantic? And so here I was in Vanuatu and on this mission trip away from home for I think six weeks, like the whole Christmas holidays. And uh, what happened was while we were in Vanuatu, there were cyclones, there were riots, and so none of the mail was getting through. So I was beginning to feel very unloved. I wasn't receiving any letters from home, not from my kind of not quite sure yet boyfriend, not from my family. And then one day, all of a sudden, I received 27 letters from Luke all in one day. That was super romantic. But actually, what the kind of love we're talking about today is one that is from the culture of the kingdom of heaven. In Romans 12 verse 2, it says this, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, the culture of the kingdom of earth, but be inwardly transformed by a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. You know, Paul here is inviting us to learn how to carry here on the kingdom of earth, the culture of the kingdom of heaven. And he's saying the way that we do that as people who've said yes to Jesus is that we actually have to begin in the mind. We have to reform the way that we think. And so this morning, my challenge to you, my encouragement to you is let's go on a journey about reforming, resetting the way we think about love. Because the kind of love that I'm going to share with you this morning is not really about those romantic feelings that we have when we're beginning a new romantic relationship. No, this is countercultural love. It's a gritty, in your face, consistent, hard fought for kind of love. You know, it's the kind of love that God demonstrated when he set in place a rescue plan for humanity before the creation of the world. It's the kind of love that Jesus demonstrated to us by dying on a cross on our behalf so that we could be forgiven of all our sin and have a way to come back into the culture and family of the kingdom of heaven. In fact, it was Jesus himself who told us that we, as Jesus' followers, would be identified as carrying the culture of heaven by the kind of love we give to each other. He says this in John 13, let me give you a new command, love one another. In the same way I have loved you, you love one another. And this is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for one another. This is the kind of love that Jesus is asking us to build into our lives and into our relationships. But what does this kind of love look like practically? Well, again, we can go to the Bible for help from the Apostle Paul. You know, traditionally, the love chapter, if you like, of the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going we're gonna to center just around a few verses from that chapter and talk about the kind of love that comes from the culture of heaven. So we'll start at verse 4. It says, Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Wow, this is already an ouch kind of love. Love does not brag about one's own achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame or disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honour. 
Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offence. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Look, to make it even simpler, this kind of love is a love that's large. I don't know about you, you know, they talk about the love languages. I kind of feel the love when I receive thoughtful gifts. And uh, as some of you know, Luke and I both turned 40 in 2020, but I personally celebrated my 40th birthday just after the beginning of the 2020 lockdown in early April. And so here I was, we had all these plans for our birthday and uh, burnt, shut down, locked down, stuck at home. And boy, did I feel the love that day. There were flowers delivered from everywhere. I had friends who brought breakfast to my front step and we sat like outside a metre and a half distance away from each other and kind of shared a coffee without being inside one another's homes. I don't know if you can cast your mind back that far, but it was almost like everybody went above and beyond in showing love for one another with all of these lockdown birthdays. Anyway, fast forward to February last year, 2021, and our family was on our annual Christmas holidays, our summer holidays, and uh, we made it to the Sunshine Coast, which is where we love to holiday, and we finally got to catch up with a couple who we had invited from Queensland to our birthday party, and of course they couldn't come because of border closures. And so we were just really there to catch up with them after all of this time of separation and not seeing them. Them. But what they did was they treated this whole day like this mega birthday bonanza. They were like, well, we never got to celebrate your 40th birthdays. And so they just laid it on thick. They lavished us with experiences. They took us out for all the meals of the day. They bought the kids ice cream. They planned activities. And we had the best fun and felt so loved by their large generosity. You know, we're going to be the kind of people who build the kind of love into our relationships with each other, with those closest, and even those that we're just getting to know. A love that's large and generous. A love that's large enough to make room for difficult people and people we disagree with. A love that's large enough to make room for blessing others over self. A love that's large enough to celebrate those who are doing better than ourselves, or at least who seem to be. And a love that's large enough to make room for loving your neighbour and yourself. We're going to be people who show this kind of love, a love that's large. What's the second thing we can take out of that passage from 1 Corinthians 13? Well, we're going to be people who have this kind of love, a love that's slow. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me tell you about slow. As some of you know, our eldest daughter, Zara, just got her peas this week, which was a source of huge celebration and joy for her and our family and for grandma, who's been large and lovingly generous enough to take her for lots of those driving hours. But uh, in the process, you know, because of you have to figure out whose personalities work best with whose. And so the arrangement we had in our family for this first learner driver was that Zara was going to be taught by her dad, by Luke. And so they did a fair bit of driving together and I wasn't really ever involved in that part of the process. But then once Zara kind of started getting a few skills, uh, we would travel as a whole family, often, you know, to our Toronto services in the afternoon after church in Cessnock on a Sunday morning. And uh, Zara would drive so that she could get the hours up. And that would mean that I was sitting in the back seat and boy, was it hard to not be a back seat driver. And so here I was holding onto my seatbelt and every time Zara took a corner that just seemed a little bit too fast for my preferences, my other daughter, Eva, who was sitting beside me, would say, oh, mum's clutching the seatbelt again. Oh, mum's clutching the seatbelt again. Because you see, I didn't feel safe if I felt like we were going too fast. 
And in the same way, the kind of love that's slow is actually the kind of love that makes people feel safe. You know, a slow love is a love that's slow enough to pause and reflect before responding when somebody speaks to us. A love that's slow is one that's slow enough to process our hurt and our disappointment and our betrayal before reacting. A love that's slow is slow enough that we're not in a hurry that makes us irritable or quickly offended. We're going to be people who have a love that's slow enough to take into account another person's perspective, to hear their story, to really listen before inserting our own opinion. We're going to be the kind of people that carry that kingdom of heaven culture of love that's slow enough to take the time to seek out the truth and do what is right over what is easy. That's what slow love is all about. So we're going to be the kind of people who build the kind of love that's large, the kind of love that's slow, and lastly, this kind of love, a love that believes. You know, the end of this passage of scripture is so beautiful where it says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. And we're going to be the kind of people who believe the best for and of others. And not only that, we're going to be the kind of people who believe in the kind of love that was demonstrated for us. As I said earlier, God in heaven loved you so much that he sent Jesus to live on the earth to show us, model for us, demonstrate for us this kind of love that we've been talking about today, to show us a countercultural kind of love, the kind of love from heaven to be built by us here on earth as followers of Jesus. And then not only that, Jesus showed us the kind of love that was willing to take upon himself all the pain, all the suffering, all the sin and wrongdoing of the whole world, every human, you, me, generations past, present and future, and then rise again to make a way for us to be a part of the loving family of the kingdom of heaven. Make a way for us to be in constant relationship. Make a way for us to have the gift of God himself present with us, the Holy Spirit, the kind of love that's present there in every moment, leading, guiding, cautioning, showing us the way. That's the kind of love that we can put our belief in today. And I'm going to invite you to do just that. Here at our church, every time we gather, we make an opportunity for people to say yes to Jesus, to say yes to this kind of love, to say yes to the invitation to build a friendship and a relationship in that safe place, in the safety of a love that is beyond the realm of earth, that it's beyond the culture of the day that we live in, but it is part of something that's eternal and generational. So will you respond to that invitation this morning? Will you say yes to building your life on this kind of love? I want to pray with you this morning as we celebrate those who are making this decision for the first time. But because we are known by our love for one another, we're actually going to pray this prayer all together, even if you've prayed it many times before, as a show of community, of the kind of love we have for each other. We're going to pray this prayer all together. Would you join me as we pray? Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life, forgive my sin, and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.